For the following exercises, solve the equations below and express the answer using set notation. Okay, so we've done uh, a couple of problems like this. So if you guys are having trouble, go back to the previous two questions on this set. Uh, these are more advanced absolute value uh, equations. So if you're a newbie, which is not a bad thing, just go back to the other uh, videos. All right. So let's get down to business. The first one we want to solve for the equation three times the absolute value of x plus one minus four equals five. We got this. Remember, the whole object of the game is you want to solve for x. And we always want to get rid of things outside of the absolute value first, because the x is trapped inside the absolute value. So the things that I see is that I have to somehow move the 3 over to the other side. And I have to move this, this negative 4, right, to the other side, because those two numbers are not trapped in the absolute value. The question is, though, which one do we do first, right? Can I divide this whole thing by 3? Or shall I do the opposite of subtracting 4, which is adding 4? The answer is you want to add 4 first to both sides. The reason being is that this 3 is all only being multiplied by the absolute value. The 3 is not being multiplied by this 4. The 3 is only being times to this, and then you subtract 4. So we can think of this 3 as being married, multiplied, married, mm, with this absolute value. So they have a strong bond. So we can easily get rid of the 4 first. And when we do that, you get 3 times the absolute value of x plus 1 equals 5 plus 4 is 9. Okay, still the, the end of the game is we want to get x equals, right? It's still being trapped inside this absolute value, and I have a 3 on the outside. So what can I do? I have to do the opposite of what's being done. This is being multiplied by the absolute value, so in order to get rid of it, I must divide by 3 on both sides. And by doing that, these cancel. I now get the absolute value of x plus 1 equals 9 divided by 3 is 3. Okay, now here comes the fun part. <laughs> the fun part in math. <laughs> in this case, the absolute value of x plus 1, right, the x, which is what we're trying to solve for, is trapped in between these lines. I can't progress any further. I have to do something about this absolute value. Now, the absolute value, the function absolute value, whatever is going on in here, it will always produce a positive number. But, you know, you might be thinking, well, what happens if, you know, some inside here it's actually a negative number? It will still produce a positive number. That's what these lines represent. Now, whatever you get, it's going to give you the positive answer. So technically, there are two answers here. And that's how you progress further. If your x is trapped in between the absolute value lines, you split up the equation. And once you do that, you can get rid of the absolute value and then progress further. So on the left-hand side, I will say that x plus 1 equals 3. That's what the equation is actually telling us. But technically, it could have equaled a negative 3. But because it was in the absolute value, it put out a 3. So I could say x plus 1 equals negative 3. And there are my two different equations. And once we split it up, you can get rid of the absolute value and solve for x. Let's work with the equation on the left-hand side first. So I'm just going to minus 1, minus 1. x in this case would be equal to 2. Wow, that was simple. <laughs> so I got one answer. 
And then let's do it again for the one on the right, minus one, minus one. We want to solve for x. Oh, and by the way, let me just show that this was the canceled out. So we get x equals negative three minus one is a negative four. Okay, we got our two answers. However, for this problem, it says you have to use set notation. What is set notation? It is brackets, and usually they're the squiggly brackets, which take some time to perfect. I haven't perfected mine, but they're okay squigglies. And all you do is you just put your two answers inside of the squigglies. The standard notation, however, is you want to put your answers so that they're increasing. So you'll start with the lower number on the left and the higher number on the right. So between a 2 and a negative 4, a negative is less than a 2. So I will say negative 4, comma, 2. And that's also standard. When you want to separate your numbers, you just put a comma there. All right? And that's the answer for the first one. Your brackets, negative 4, comma, 2. Done. Let's go into the next one. 5 times the absolute value of x minus 4 minus 7, 7, equals 2. Object of the game is to get x by itself. However, it's being trapped inside the absolute values, and there are two numbers that we have to throw to the opposite side. The 5 has to go, and the negative 7 has to go to the other side. Which one is done first? Keep in mind, the 5 is only being timesed by the absolute value. It is not being times by the 7. So if we try to divide the whole thing by 5, that's not good. They're married. Multiplication, married, they have a tight bond. So what we will do is we will do the opposite. Negative 7 over here, so I will just plus 7 to both sides for right now. And that cancels this out. So now we have 5 times the absolute value of x minus 4 equals 2 plus 7 is 9. I still want to get the x right by itself. It's being multiplied by 5. Now I can divide the whole thing by 5. And that cancels out. And I got to do it on the other side. So... Now I have the absolute value of x minus 4 equals 9 over 5. But now I still want to try to get x by itself. However, it's being trapped inside of these um, absolute value signs. I, it looks like I can't progress further, but then I remember that this is when I separate. The absolute value is only going to give you the positive answer, but technically it could have been a negative. So there is your break off. And once you break the two equations off, you get rid of the absolute value sign. So x minus 4 equals 9 over 5. x minus 4 equals negative 9 over 5. Let's figure out these numbers. I still want to solve for x, so I will plus 4. Plus 4. And I'll put the answer up here. I'll say x equals, now 9 over 5 plus 4, 29 over 5. You can plug this into your calculator, by the way. You can put the, it really depends on what your teacher or your professor wants. You could put the decimal answer in there. You could put the fraction answer in there. So, for example, this was 29 over 5, which is what I will use because I want you guys to be more fluent with fractions, but you could have easily just said 5.9, but that depends on your teacher or your professor, if they want fractions or not. So when you add 9 over 5 plus 4, you get 29 over 5. Cool. Now let's do the other one. You want to get x by itself, so plus 4 plus 4. This will cancel, and I will put the answer over here. x equals a negative 9 over 5 plus 4, uh, so that's negative 9 plus 20, 
is 11, but I will just double check. 11, yep, so 11 over 5. But once again, you could just say this is equal to 2.2, .2, but that depends on your teacher or your professor. Okay, so we have these two answers, awesome. But now we just have to put into set notation. So squiggles, which one is the smaller number? Okay, so now this is where fractions come into play. They're both over the same denominator. They're both over five. So you always look at the top number. The higher number is the bigger number. Between 29 and a 11, a 29 is a bigger number. So this one would be higher and this one would be lower, which means that I have to start with the 11 over five. Comma, 29 over five. And that's it. Um, could you have put your decimal answers in? Sure, but just run it with your teacher or your professor if they want fractions or if they want decimals. So, cool. Okay, last one. This one, zero equals a negative absolute value of x minus three plus two. Okay, the name of the game is to get x by itself. It's being trapped with this absolute value. So, what am I going to do? Well, wh what does this negative mean? This is a negative 1. A negative in, in front of a function is just a negative 1. So I have a negative 1 times the absolute value of x minus 3 and then plus 2. Which one do we do first? Divide the whole thing by negative 1? Or are we going to do the opposite, so minus 2? We are going to minus 2. Awesome job. From both sides. So now we have negative 2 equals a negative 1 times the absolute value of x minus 3. And now we just want the absolute value of x minus 3. We just want to solve for x. There is a negative 1 in front which we have to get rid of. So it's being multiplied, so we can just divide by negative one, and that will cancel that out. So divide by negative one. Negative two divided by negative one is just a two, equals the absolute value of x minus three. And now the x and the three, they're both trapped inside of this absolute value, so I can't progress any further. Ah, that means I split them up. And one is going to equal the two, and the other is going to equal the negative two. So two equals x minus three. I take away the absolute value. And then negative two equals x minus three. Now let's solve. You want to solve for x. I need to get rid of this negative three. So plus three. So I have an x equals, or we'll say on this side, 5 equals x, just to keep everything in line with one another. Cool. And then for this side, I need to get rid of the minus 3. So I will plus 3 to both sides. That gets rid of this. And then negative 2 plus 3 is just a 1. So 1 equals x. Oh, yeah. So there's your two answers. Set notation, squiggles. Which number is bigger, 5 or 1? A 5, right? So the 1 is smaller, that one comes first. 1, 5. Look at that, guys. Woohoo! Awesome, awesome, awesome job. What'd you think? This was fun, right? I had fun. I love doing math. Um, let me know if this helped you at all. Um, you know, hit the subscribe button, you know, do, do whatever, you know, they say to do smash the button or whatever. <laughs> um, thank you so much though we really do appreciate you guys I hope this is helping you in your math class and I, I hope you guys have a, a great day and you know keep studying hard you guys got this I will see you guys all in the next video bye bye